face that this world has forgotten. What's up, guys? And of course, welcome to another different video from your Strollers Garden. And that was a very weird leeway. Let's actually keep that one. Anyway, uh, as you guys already know, you know, I've been having a bit of an issue if you follow me on Twitter with actually uploading Wi Fi ballast. And it had to do with time constraints and things at work. And of course, having a babe on the way. It's, uh, yeah. It's stressful, so I'll be able to record them, but not narrate them. But don't worry, they are coming. So I'll try to upload them as soon as I can. Of course, tomorrow is the release really better series, which actually are already done. Now, with that said, I want to talk about a Pokemon I think are very underrated right now in PU, and I just want to share some light on it. And therefore, the video's title is a Sleeper Hit. Basically, I want to talk about Pokemon that I think are underutilized in different tiers, and Dothic is definitely one of them that I feel are due to the environment, kind of hard to use, or not necessarily hard to use, but there are other Pokemon that have a similar role, hence making the Pokemon less available, even though it's actually really good. So let's talk about, of course, it's... Now, one thing that really made Dotix interesting is its stats total. While its typing is fairly unique, I really just want to have this straight out of the way when it comes to stats. It has the same defensive stats as Bulba, it's actually a bit bulkier even. So that's very interesting about it. Also, when it comes to its attack and special attack, it is on par with the goal, but the only thing that stands out is its speed. So we have 78 in HP, which is very fair, uh, then 75 and 17 special defense, which I think are the most relevant one. And video while I you actually kick in 120, 110. And that's a very, very bulky Pokemon on its own. Uh, 75 and 17 special attack are fair enough for a bulky Pokemon. Primarily here, you're going to be clearly offensive to some extent, but your primary role is actually what the stats are giving you, which is bulky out, and Dothic actually saw this fairly well. Now, 52 in speed here, as stated, it is not the speediest speed here at all. While you do uh, creep the naturally, of course, the base 50 Pokemon, which I think is quite right, uh, you definitely want to creep the wild likes of 60 to be able to really, really push the boundaries, but you're very, very easy to leave it to do so due to the 52 actually being fairly speedy for a bulkier Pokemon. But while it's not as stated, you know, as fast as Golbat, I do believe Golbat is a base 80 or 90, uh, it is still a fair speed here for a defensive Pokemon, which makes Dotix on its own very interesting. Now, the typing of Dotix is quite loaded for different reasons, but quite frankly, grass and flying. It's not necessarily the best defensive typing, but one has to have this in mind. It has immunity in spikes and toxic spikes, and of course, in ground on its own. That's a good parameter already. While you do strongly resist grass and fighting and water, you really are doing fairly fine against a lot of things. And of course, due to being grass, you're actually not weak to electric. So grass do resolve what I think is the worst kind of environment for a grass type. Now, there are issues here, of course. Grass type actually generally are very bad defensive typing. And it really does become showcased here with fire, flying, poison. And of course, uh, while you are weak to rock, that is probably from flying. And that's all right. But being weak to rocks, yeah, it's not necessarily bad or the best time of time. But at the same time, you know, this is an issue I think Golbat has too. It does preserve that situation fairly right. Now, you are very weak to ice, and this is something that I think makes this Pokemon kind of people are shying away from it. But quite frankly, you only need a team synergy to figure that out. You know, a fire type or a water type will resolve that just fine. And even at that, actually, fire type does resolve your possible weakness to fire on its own. And if you really want to kick it, trust me, and a steel Pokemon will also resolve at some extent, making flying poison rock and, of course, ice a non existing problem. While, of course, the fire weakness are still inborn. But Pokemon such as Iron, for example, makes a very fair Pokemon to be actually be combined here because of the immunities that is resolved with this Pokemon in mind. So, Dotix, very, very good defensive typing if you want to capitalize it on being just that defensive. Now, when it comes to his ability, it is really unfortunate that as of this moment, we only have Overgrow, which makes it kind of forceful as you really want to capitalize on, you know, Leaf Blade and whatnot. But once Long Reach is available, this will be very cool, making any Rocky Helmet or Rough Skin uh, pretty much immune, basically, to them. You can actually spam Braver, for example, or Sucker Punch. And that is what I talk about when it comes to... Uh, this incredible Pokemon that is Dotix, its move pool is a very interesting one. Because first and foremost, we have priority in Sucker Punch, we have Leaf Blade. If you want to capitalize on being defensive, you have the accessibility of utilizing Feather Dance. If you have Braver, which 
is something that's super common with cold bats. You know, the Bree Bird, Toxic, Defog, Ruse. It's a very stellar um, combination of moves, and you can actually capitalize on that with Dothics too. And we have Toxic. This is going to be one of those really niche moves, but it works. So if you're going to be defensive, you can actually pull that off. And it, since they have a roost, yeah, you're going to use that just fine. We also have Nasty Plot together with actually Sword Stance, which I forgot to add here. And you can basically become a setup sweeper if you want to try that, uh, or a possible wall breaker. I do believe its stats allow it to pull that off, but it definitely should be in mind here that defensive role is probably what it does best. We also have Light Screen if you want to be a possible screener. Uh, curse if you want to be that type of the player and actually curse up with Sucker Punch and Sub. This could be somebody we have lights on with Confuse Ray, making it even more like actually Golbat. And then we have the last move, Haze and Defog. Haze, kind of interesting because it means no Pokemon can set up against you. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend it, but you have the option to pull that off. And of course, Defog, making it a premier Defog in PU. And I do believe it does do this fairly all right. I definitely will put it in the same level as Golbat, even though it has what I would say the worst kind of issue with ice in mind. That's a big weakness. But outside of that, it does actually resolve the same type of a role. So why is this Pokemon often more used? Well, the easy idea would say that Dotix is not conventionally used, which basically means that, yeah, there are you know, other Pokemon that does shy it away. I think Skunk Tank, for example, is a primal defogger, has resolved that issue of being a stationary or poison type and whatnot. But to some extent, I think if that's the only one, then you know that would not make it a fair point. But it actually is. I mean, we have really no stellar ice type in PU. While Ice Punch is a possible issue, it's it's not like it kills it. Uh, Life Orb from uh, Ice Punch actually did not KO a defensive Daltix, and Daltix could very well with Brave World actually KO in return. So you have the option to pull that off, and I think Daltix is showing itself to be a very interesting Pokemon on its own. But yeah, the issues right now are like the Quillfish, for example, is able to hit it super effectively if it packs the poison moves. And of course, Skunk Tank are solving it as a possible defogger. But outside of that, it's a very decent Pokemon. I don't believe this is a Pokemon that is necessarily easy to set up against. And due to Roost and whatnot, it's actually able to pull off a lot of different situations fairly right. Hell, I'll even see people try to use this to speed creep a lantern, you know, defensive variant, only to actually be very successful. Not because necessarily they do super effective damage towards it because they only carry Braver, but due to Roost, they're able to nullify an Ice Beam, and of course, Toxic stall it to death, and that is a very rare occurrence. And that's the interesting part about Dotix. I think it has, a, it has the stats and it has the distribution to pull up a lot of very, very different matchup really well, and this is something that really, really brings it to a different kind of level. And I think it's very underrated in PU, and I would highly recommend anyone who needs a stellar defogger to consider Dotix to your team because I think it is very, very underrated and I definitely would see this Pokemon race when the PU is, of course, ever evolving with the likes of Mesper's hopefully disappearing soon. So, yeah, that would actually resolve my video. I really hope you guys like this type of idea. I really want to tackle more Pokemon like this, but quite frankly, this was a filler episode for me to just really mention how cool Dotix are and how underrated it probably is. I definitely believe, as I said before, it is a Pokemon that I think people aren't using because the matchup right now does not allow it, but also at the same time, there are different Pokemon doing its role fairly all right, making it not necessarily less useful, but the others are easier to use, even though Dotix probably can actually resolve a lot more matchup than they ever could due to its defensive natural capabilities. So that's it guys, thank you so much for watching of course, and join us of course tomorrow when we're gonna look upon Sock versus Fro and who was really better. Until then of course as always, take care.